This video briefly demonstrates the key steps to installing Quick Mount PV's new low slope mount onto an insulated membrane roof on a corrugated steel substrate. Roofs vary considerably, and to maintain the roof warranty and reduce your own liability, it's important to study the roofing manufacturer's warranty, carefully follow the Quick Mount PV instructions that come in the box, and to consult the engineer of record whenever possible. Start by attaching the post to the Q-base. The mount can be attached to wood, concrete, or steel. Each of these types of substrate requires a different kind of fastener. The low slope mount comes packaged with a pair of three inch lag bolts, and these are used for attaching the mount to a wooden structure. If you core through the insulation and find concrete, you're going to need to use quarter inch concrete screws. If you're mounting to a steel substrate, you're going to need 516-18 UNC machine bolts. And in this demonstration, we are going to be mounting on corrugated steel, so we're going to use these commonly available machine bolts. Use a 4-inch core drill to cut through the membrane and down into the insulation. Make sure to line up the hole directly above the raised section of the corrugated steel. Remove the insulation from the hole and save the larger pieces. You can use these to backfill the hole when you're done. You can use a vacuum to clear out the dust and debris. Now place the post and the cue base down onto the corrugated steel so that you can mark the penetration points through the holes in the plate with a pencil or drill. Drill your pilot holes using either a J-sized or quarter inch drill bit. Depending on the specifics of the structure, you may drill holes for either two or four bolts. It's highly recommended that you consult the building's engineer of record when making this important decision. After drilling your pilot holes, you have several options. You can bolt down your mount using a set of 516-18 UNC thread cutting machine bolts. Using thread cutting bolts saves you time because you will not have to tap the hole. If you don't have thread cutting bolts, you can tap the holes using a 516-18 tap. Once you have tapped the holes, you can fasten down the mount using a set of standard 516-18 UNC machine bolts. As another option, access permitting, you can drill clearance holes and put nuts on the machine bolts from underneath. In this demonstration, we're going to use the first of these three methods and bolt down the mount using two 516-18 UNC thread cutting machine bolts. We recommend using this time-saving method whenever possible. Use a half inch deep socket impact gun to fasten your bolts. Once you have securely bolted down your mount, backfill the hole using spray foam.
Alternatively, you can backfill the hole using the larger pieces of insulation that you cord out. You are now ready to flash the mount and the roof around it. It's essential to use the flashing material specified by the roofing manufacturer. On the higher parts of the roof, you can use a 4-inch boot, but for mounts placed in the drip line or flood zone on the outer edges of the roof, the NRCA recommends using an 8-inch boot. Of course, this requires the use of a longer post. Quick Mount PV offers posts in 7, 9, and 12-inch lengths. Whenever installing a solar array onto a commercial roof, it is essential to use the surfaces of a certified roofer who knows how to properly heat weld the boot to the membrane and secure the flashing cone to the post using a stainless steel pipe clamp and the proper membrane compatible sealant. This concludes our brief demonstration of how to install Quick Mount PV's low slope mount on an insulated membrane roof with a corrugated steel substrate. For more information on the low slope mount and all Quick Mount PV products, please visit our website.